So um, again, um, this is me, myself, that's my photo. Uh, I'm a dimensional engineer with Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. I completed my MS in mechanical engineering from uh, Michigan Technological University and uh, with concentration in solid mechanics. And uh, now I have about five years of experience in uh, product design and development. So um, let's cut to the chase and uh, talk about GDNT. Why do we need GDNT? So uh, this main significance of GDNT is to control the dimensional variation in parts. So uh, you see, I work on a car called Jeep Wrangler and uh, every year we make about 80,000 or 90,000 Jeeps and we, we sell them out. So what makes each and every Jeep exactly the same? What makes, what makes it sure that each and every Jeep has the same quality is because of GDNT. So with GDNT, we control the variation in parts. So there are body panels, uh, there are uh, mounts, and what we do is each and every body panel should look the same, should attach the same. So we do this with the help of GDNT. So when we have less variation, we have less waste. The other significance of GDNT is gap analysis. So uh, consider two parts that go onto a third part, okay, part A and part B. And there is a little bit of gap in between those. Imagine two body panels on the side of the car. On the right side of the car, there are two body panels and they go together on the body. So there is a little bit gap in between them. And how do we perform the gap analysis? That gap can increase or that gap can decrease. So we use uh, GDNT techniques like uh, RSS. Uh, it's a statistical method called root sum square for one dimensional variation. And if it's a three dimensional variation, we use a software called 3DCS. Uh, the third uh, significance of GDNT is to define the locating scheme of the parts. So which is, which is also we call as datum scheme. So what datum scheme does is uh, basically it uh, tells the operator how to how to attach the part. So A datum or the primary datum would go first, then B datum, and then finally the C datum. So this is how we control uh, the locating scheme of the parts. And finally, there is an organization called ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineering. So what they do is they every 14, 15 years they will uh, create new norms for GDNT and they will publish it. And we as a GDNT engineers are responsible to go through the norms and uh, make sure we are using the latest current practices in our work. So I mostly work on steering and engine mounts and I make sure that all my GDNT is in concurrence with the ASME 14.5 2009. Uh, the first uh, ASME standard was published in 1994 and the second was published in 2009. And I'm hearing rumor that soon this year or next year they are going to publish a third ASME standard. Um, it's pretty much the same, uh, just they add some more symbols and uh, just clarify more things. But overall, the basic concepts is the same. So uh, this is an interactive session and if you have any questions, please make sure you ask any questions in the chat box and Sarang would get back to me. And um, let's talk about the history of GDNT. So uh, earlier in 1940s or 1930s, there was no GDNT. Uh, so is it just the latest fad? No, absolutely not. Uh, GDNT is a very technical, very precise way to control the variation of parts. So um, there is no paper trail as such to see how GDNT was developed, but it is said that an engineer called Stanley Parker in the Royal Torpedo Factory in Alexandria, Scotland. So he is the one who came up concept with the true position in about 1938. Uh, true position meaning the position tolerance, what we call right now. And then the position tolerance, then we added the concepts of profile tolerance, flatness, perpendicularity, etc. And uh, that is how G GDNT came into picture. And uh, after the World War II uh, in 1950s, when there was a boom in manufacturing, especially uh, automobile sector, then GDNT was highly used in industry. And uh, that is how it started developing. So why do we need GDNT? What's the use of GDNT? Um, in, our ex uh, in, in our general engineering, what we learn is we only learn about size tolerance. So let's say there's a pin over here. And then what we do is we just give 10 plus minus one size tolerance. Okay. So um, what the, um, if I'm a checker for this part, what I would do is I will touch this point over here. I will touch this point over here. Let's say in the first, uh, first part, I have 9.97, part is okay. So basically what it means is that the diameter should lie between nine to 11. The second part is 10.1 millimeter. As operator, what I would say, okay, fine. 
third part is 10.3 fine but what i really as an engineer what i really wanted to do is i wanted to control the perpendicularity of this pin to this surface so with this normal call out with this traditional call out there is no control over the perpendicularity on a very bad day the operator can produce a part something like this and the checker will touch point 1 over here point 2 over here and 9.9 .9. good the part is good to go 10.1 the part is good to go is it really what we wanted no what i as an engineer or as a designer what i wanted is i wanted this axis to be perpendicular to my surface that is where the g in gdnt stands for g means geometric so it apart from the size tolerance it also defines the geometry of the part it defines that it tells the operator hey guys i need this to be perpendicular not at an angle so this is why gdnt is necessary and this is a very simple part and um, in industry there are more complex parts um, like the steering or the body panels which require a very tight geometry to be controlled and that is why gdnt is necessary so um, industrial gdnt uh, industrial gdnt is uh, slightly different from theoretical uh, gdnt it's the same but uh, the uh, the main thing is it's highly focused on functional aspects of the part meaning that uh, what i have to do is my only objective in uh, applying gdnt is to make the parts as repeatable as possible so each and every body panel each and every door each and every exhaust system should look the same and should attach in the same way that is the primary purpose of gdnt in industry um when we have all the parts same what we do is we standardize the process with the standardize uh, when we standardize the process we have a dramatic time savings because the operator knows exactly the how how the part is going to attach into my car a third thing is root solve uh, root cause solving and uh, this is a very important part in gdnt so let's say on a very bad day um, i'm not able to attach the part the operator would just raise the flag and ask me to and call me to the uh, plant and say hey guys this is not attaching and please find the root cause and then as a gdnt engineer my job is to find which exact tolerance is causing the problem or which exact tolerance is uh, not letting me to attach the part in the car and that is why we have a concept called highest contributor so we we put all the gdnt in the parts or all the tolerances will below the other and we put the contributors so this is 90% this is 10% etc etc and of course the 90% contributor will have will play a major role will be the culprit in the problem that we are having and finally dimensional engineer so dimensional engineer uh, believe me has a very lucrative salary it's a very nice job it's a nice behind the desk job and sometimes you get get to go to the plant when there is a problem in the plant so it's kind of 50 50% 50% of the time you have to work behind the desk and 50% you have to actually go on the line to me this is the best job you can ever have in your life um gdnt is used in any manufacturing industry believe me in, it's used in automobiles it is used in medical it is used in electronics uh, companies like apple samsung they use gdnt a lot and actually in medical industry the gdnt are very very tight it's in the uh, in automobiles we generally we have gdnt in form of millimeters but in medical and electronics they they go as tight as microns but if you know the basics of gdnt you can apply it in any manufacturing industry so um, having uh, said that let's talk about uh, the agenda for today so in this meeting what we are going to do is uh, we are going to go through five different points so first of all uh, we are going to talk about uh, feature control frames uh, feature control frame as i like to call it the language of gdnt then we'll call about datums talk about datums um, datums is nothing but the uh, building blocks of feature control frame then we'll talk about four different types of tolerances flatness perpendicularity profile and position we'll go through one example to see how these tolerances are added to uh, an actual part and then uh, at the end you can ask me any questions you have okay so um, i'll be taking a quick sip of water please bear with me so guys in the meantime <clears throat> if you have any questions that you would like to ask doesn't matter how basic it is please type them in the chat box and what's going to happen is uh, i would just read out the questions to prasad and he would uh, answer them for you all right yes, so please. any questions like i said let's try to keep the session interactive 
because we really want you to ask meaningful questions to Prasad and also try to answer some of the questions that he may ask. Please carry on, Prasad. Thank you, sir. Okay, 